Welcome back everyone. Today I got out the old Atari 7800 and you can probably see that mine is not in exactly the best of shape. This is actually the first console I bought once I got back into gaming. Of course I had the, the Genesis from before, but this was the first one that, you know, sort of started my journey back into uh, retro gaming and, and whatnot. And one of the only complaints I have about it is that the output is your standard RF output. Now this is, is a complaint that's valid for most of these old systems and when you're trying to hook it up to newer TVs or really even older TVs the uh, the picture quality isn't as great as it could be. So what I have here, we're gonna do a little mod today. Uh, I have this little kit here that will allow you to run S-Video or composite video out of your 7800. Uh, I'm gonna go with the S-Video it comes with this little uh, little small PCB here and you can either get that assembled or unassembled and while I feel like I could probably assemble this myself I was just kinda lazy and the extra five bucks was worth it to me just to have someone else put this together so at any rate so you get the uh, the PCB and then you also get your S video output and your composite and um, your audio out. Now this is a mono audio uh, which is to be expected it's a mono system. Also you get this little socket here and I'll show you what that's for once we get into the mod and you get some wiring and whatnot. Now this mod will require soldering skills you know those sorts of things so I definitely recommend uh, you know practicing your soldering and everything before you start doing mods like this but anyway let's get this thing open and take a look. Now once you get the case off, you're going to want to take the shielding off here, and I've already done it, but there's uh, another piece on the other side of the board here, it kind of sort of sandwiches everything in there, and the only thing that's holding it on are these little tabs on the side. So they come up through the board, and then they go into this top board here, and then they're just twisted. So all you need to do is just untwist them and then use a, a small screwdriver just to gently lift the uh, the shielding away. Then we have our board underneath here. And as you can probably see, this one is pretty dirty. And I'll be cleaning up the whole system as I do this, so that'll be kind of a nice, uh, nice addition here. Now what we're going to want to do is, the, the basic mod is we're going to take this uh, chip out here and we're going to replace it with our socket and we're going to take out a number of these little resistors here and uh, solder some wires in so I'm going to do that and then I'll show you where everything goes so I finally have the IC removed and our socket put in and this honestly gave me a lot of trouble this is the most trouble I've had with something in a long time and I was getting really pissed off with this thing so uh, I finally got it out here, out of here, but at the expense of this capacitor here that uh, I broke in the midst of doing everything. Also, this trace came up. Uh, so that's that normally would be a, a really serious disaster, but shouldn't be too bad. The trace goes to this this bottom leg down here, so I'm just gonna have to run a wire uh, to it. So long story short, be very careful when you're taking out ICs like this. This, these two here, actually probably all the ones on this board, but there's not, not even a millimeter of space underneath them, and, uh, you know, getting all the solder off was almost impossible, and, and it just really uh, can be a disaster like it was here. So, uh, next we, I took three resistors out, and I've got five wires going to various places, and they will all go back to... Uh, my five uh, input um, connections here and I've got my Luma, my Chroma and my audio out on the other side and those of course will go to my S-Video and uh, my audio. So I got everything done that I can. I don't have this particular capacitor uh, you know readily available so I'm gonna have to go try to find one tomorrow and it's very strangely labeled. It's uh, A5E104, which after I looked it up online, I found out that the 5 stands for 50 volts, uh, which makes no sense to me. And the 104 makes even less sense. It actually stands for 
uh, 100, uh, no, 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 100 nanofarads, I almost said micro. But uh, regardless, uh, actually the 104 does make sense, it's a, it's a power of 10 thing, but uh, regardless, I do not have one of those, so I'm going to have to go, go grab one. But uh, once we get everything wired up, you can see that on the, the board itself, if it'll focus, hello, all right, there we go. On the board itself, we actually have the pins that go in to our socket here. So this will actually just sit pretty nicely there. And I'm going to use the, the uh, rest of the evening to try to get the case cleaned up and, and all of that. So uh, through the magic of editing, I'll see you tomorrow in about five seconds. And we're back on day two. So as you can see, I've replaced our capacitor here. How well you can see that. This looks a little bit different than the one that was in there. It's a lot larger, uh, made of different material, but that's no problem because it's rated the same. Also, this little wire that you see here is replacing the trace that I accidentally ripped up. Um, again, be patient. Don't do that like I did. And we have all of our wires uh, going where they're supposed to go. We've got our different signals coming in uh, to our little bore, extra board here. Uh, and then going out to you know the lumen, the chroma of the S video, and then the the mono audio output. So all that's good to go. And then we put our little sort of daughter board here on into the socket. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but just be sure if you get one of these, just to make sure it's it's really set in there nice. Uh, it will go all the way down in there. You just have to give it you know a nice little push, but. Again, just be sort of be careful and be sure to push right over the pins there and not get anything uh, uh, bent or anything. So I put the the S video and the mono audio out on the back here. Uh, it's not as pretty as I'd like it to be, but that's okay. And what used to be there, um, I didn't have to do a whole lot of modifications to the case itself, but I had to take out the uh, the RF modulator so you know we won't be needing that anyway so it doesn't matter and then also this little switch here and that's just a little channel switch and those came out from uh, these two spots here so it makes room for our outputs which then you know are hooked into the board and pretty much everything's ready to go all we have to do now is hook it up and we'll take a look at some comparison footage alright so unbeknownst to you it's been almost two months since the clip that you just watched. Uh, that was back in October. It's now uh, December, almost Christmas time. And uh, I had a problem. I had everything put together, and it should have should have gone well. Everything should have worked. I tried it out with the 2600 game. Everything was working fine. looked amazing. And then I put a 7800 game in it, and uh, it was in black and white. And I couldn't figure out what the deal was. I knew obviously that there are, uh, you know, different interfaces involved with those uh, with those two. Uh, the 2600 uses the TIA, while the 7800 uses the Maria. So I wasn't sure exactly what to do from there. So I emailed the the guys that made this. I actually didn't buy it directly from them, but I emailed them at that time. It took them a little while to get back, although uh, from what I understand, they don't make these anymore. So. Uh, if you can find one, definitely get a hold of one quickly before they're all gone. Uh, although they do include the schematics, so if you want to build one yourself, you're more than welcome to do that. So he told me that the problem would be in this one chip uh, right here. Let's see if I can get close enough for you guys to see it. Uh, you see U5 there. And that is a really tiny, tiny chip. And so... What I did was, I just got the old soldering iron out. I didn't add any solder to it or anything. I just tried to reflow the solder along each of the legs. Uh, on something that small especially, you don't want to add any solder unless you have to. Uh, because more than likely, you're just going to end up bridging something or something like that. So I reflowed the solder uh, and tried it out again, and it worked fine. So, uh, so yeah, everything's uh, done. Just got to put the case back together, and I'll show you some comparison footage. Okay, so we have everything hooked up and running. We've got Frankenstein's monster in there. Uh, probably appropriate given the situation here. So we'll go ahead and take a look what that looks like on the screen here. 
And again, it's you know it's kind of tough to to see exactly through the camera, but uh, you know if I kind of move in here, you can see with proper up conversion and added scan lines, everything just looks really nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you guys some before and after footage, um, both uh, filming the TV and direct capture, so you guys can see what the difference uh, looks like. See if you want to do this for yourself. So here's the standard RF out on Frankenstein's monster. And you'll notice right off the bat that it's really dark and it's just, it's a really dirty signal. And your colors aren't really represented uh, as they should be. Now, if we switch over to the S video here, you can see it brightens everything up. All your colors are just right. And the signal is nice and clean. So this is as clear as you can get it for the Atari. Now, I also uh, recorded some footage off the television. Doesn't look so great because I didn't uh, adjust my camera correctly. But you can still see here it's nice and bright. And with the addition of the SLG and proper up conversion, this looks really great on an HDTV. Next up we have Pitfall. And again, really dirty signal, dark, not, not really a great show of the colors. And once again, if we change that over to the S-Video, brightens everything up all the colors are accurate and it just it just looks great really looks great and finally again I did film the TV not you know the best of quality but you could see that everything sort of translates nicely over to an HD television and this is especially apparent on an HD TV if you're if you're doing this S video mod now one thing I should mention too as we go into our next game, which is Galaga for the 7800, is that it does modify the sound as well. And you may or may not like that quality. It cleans it up a lot, but it also sort of exposes some of the weaknesses of the Atari's sound capabilities. So in a lot of ways, the RF sound is a lot warmer than what you get with the S-Video mod. But regardless, I think it's it's fine. It's not really all that big of a deal. And the, the increase in the picture quality is well worth it. Our next 7800 game is the classic Mario Brothers, and this one really, I think, shows it off well as well. And once again, the you know the RF out, same problems as before, just not a great picture, dirty signal, dark colors. But when we switch over to the S video, everything looks nice and bright, uh, lots of contrast, and and just I mean it just really looks great. Now also on this one, I actually zoomed in on the television so you can see that everything is just really pixel perfect. So we can take a look at it here and see that everything is just, just absolutely perfect. Our final game is Xevious for the 7800. And I just want to go on record as saying that I can't stand these friggin hit and run donuts. Get back here and fight like a man. I should note that the S-Video mod does make it a lot easier to see the bullets in this game, which is one of my, my big complaints with it, is they tend to sort of blend into the background with the RF output. But regardless, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and let me know if you have any questions about the mod or anything of that, that nature, and thanks for watching.